that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord is truly good and gracious unto us, allowing us to come together one more time. Lord, and we just thank all of those who are out there in Zoom land, all of those who are on Facebook Live this morning. We praise the Lord. Hey, praise the Lord. You know, it's just so good for us to be able just to come together one more time. We just had a wonderful, blessed church school lesson this morning. Amen, amen, amen. We just thank God for the Wilkies for bringing us such a wonderful lesson Sunday after Sunday. The Wilkie team that works together to make sure that everything go smoothly for us and we thank God for them. You know sometimes the enemy trying to get in and we have a little technical difficulties but you know what we work through them and, and the Lord just allow us to to make sure that we get the word. Amen. And you know the word is what's going to keep us. Everything else going down but the word of God. Amen. So that's why we're coming together this morning because we know pastor has a word for us today. You know you got to just be excited. Amen. You be excited about what God is about to do. And God is about to speak a word through our pastor this morning. And we just going to get our hearts right and our spirits right so that we can receive everything that God got for us. Do you believe that God got something for you this morning? Amen, amen, amen. See, I want everything that God got to give me. Amen. I don't know about you. I just can't get enough of God. Amen. I know I need him every minute, every single second of the day. Amen. You know, because he, by ourselves, we can't do nothing. But with God, all things are possible. And if you're dealing with anything in your life, uh, any obstacle, any situation, any family problem, any financial problem, uh, any relationship problem, Know that God is the answer. Invite God in it. Amen, amen. When things get too hard for you, is there anything too hard for God? Glory to God. We know that there is nothing too hard for God. Uh, we just thank God this morning. Amen, amen. We just thank the Lord for those of you um, who tune in Sunday after Sunday. And we are so blessed to have your presence with us. And at this time, we're going to go to the Lord for a word of prayer. Let's bow our heads. Father God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord God, we just come before you this morning. Oh God, we come to exalt you, Lord God. Oh God, we come to lift you up. Oh God, we come by your holy name. Oh God, we come as your people, Lord God, who are called by your name, God. Oh God, we come, Lord God, as humble God. Oh God, humbly before your throne of grace, Lord God. We come, Lord God, because we seek you, God. We seek your face, God. We seek you, Lord God, because we wish to hear from you, Lord God. Oh God, we thank you, Lord God, that you are God. Oh God, that never leaves us or never forsakes us. is always there for us. Even, Lord God, when we, God, don't know where we are, God. Oh, God, when we're wandering around aimlessly trying to find our way, God, you are always there. All we got to do is just turn to you, and you will lead us, and you will guide us, and you will show us, oh, God, what you will have for us to do. So this morning, God, oh, God, we cry out, oh, God. Oh, God, for our families, God, our friends, Lord God, who may be going through some challenges, Lord God. We cry out, Lord God, asking God that you lead and God and just show us your way, God. Lord, we thank you, God, for coming in to our midst this morning. Have your way. Have your way, God. Have your way in our service this morning. Speak to our hearts so that we may hear what you would have for us to do in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. So we just thank God for just coming in our midst this morning. If you are turning your Bibles to the book of Numbers, <coughs> Numbers chapter 17, amen. Old Testament scripture this morning, the book of Numbers chapter 17. And I'm going to start reading at verse number one. 
It's an old familiar scripture that you've heard many times before. Amen. If you would just follow along, I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it says, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel. Get from them a rod from each father's house. My, my Lord. All their leaders according to their father's houses, 12 rods. Write each man's name on his rod. You shall write Aaron's name on the rod of Levi. For there should be one rod for the head of each father's house. Then you shall place them in the tabernacle of meeting before the testimony where I will meet with you. And it shall be that the rod of the man whom I choose will blossom. Thus I will rid myself of the complaints of the children of Israel, which they make against you. So Moses spoke to the children of Israel, and each of their leaders gave him a rod apiece. For each leader, according to their father's houses, twelve rods, and the rod of Aaron was among their rods. And Moses placed the rods before the Lord in the tabernacle of witness. Now it came to pass on the next day that Moses went into the tabernacle of witness. And behold, the rod of Aaron on the house of Levi had sprouted out and put forth buds, had produced blossoms, and yielded ripe almonds. Then Moses brought out all the rods from before the Lord to all the children of Israel. And they looked, and each man took his rod. And the Lord said to Moses, Bring Aaron's rod back before the testimony, to be kept as a sign against the rebels, that you may put their complaints away from me, lest they die. Thus did Moses, just as the Lord had commanded him to do. So he did. So the children of Israel spoke to Moses, saying, Surely we die, we perish, we all perish. Whoever even comes near the tabernacle of the Lord must die. Shall we all utterly die? Thus in the reading of Numbers chapter 17, may the Lord bless the reading of his most holy word. Amen, amen, amen. At this time, pastor will come before us for our time of giving. Amen. What a wonderful time uh, to be able to give during this fall season, this harvest time. Bring our, our harvest into the storehouse. Pastor is coming. And uh, so that uh, we can lift up our gifts to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good morning, saints. How you doing in presence of the Lord this morning? Good to just see your faces in the house this morning. It is our time that we come at a time for giving. Giving, and first of all, we want to thank you, those of you that are given to the house of the Lord. Know that you give on good ground. Thank you for your paying of your giving of your tithes and paying your tithes and giving your offering. Uh, thank you so very much. We're so pleased that God has blessed us in his care and allowed us to be into the house of the Lord. Now, as we come now with our time of giving, uh, if you would get your gifts and get them uh, ready to give, you can give by Giveify. You can go to our website. Uh, you can uh, send it in the mail. Uh, or you can drop it off by the church. Uh, either way, uh, just thank you for giving unto the ministry. And now let's lift our minutes, let's lift our gifts up before the Lord. And together, God, this is my gift. It is a seed, and I plant it in this ministry. 
I'm expecting the harvest in this ministry and in my life. I'm expecting it to be exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I ask, all that I, ask, all that I, think, all that I think, and all that I imagine. And all that I imagine. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. That I'm able to give. That I'm able to give. In Christ Jesus' in name. Christ Jesus oh, come name. on, put your hand together and bless the Lord for what you're about to do in the body of Christ. And know that your All gifts make a difference make in the kingdom of God. All right. We see Brother Elta is up and he's ready. Amen. To lead us in praise to the Lord. Let us lift our voices up in praise as he come and just give God some thanksgiving. I tell you. 
Praise the Lord, the name, the name of the Lord be praised. Thank God for the blessings of his brother. And thank you for just being connected in the house of the Lord and to the blessings of God. You know, God is a marvelous and a wonderful God. He's a good God, a merciful God. And he's just kind and just a blessing unto the kingdom. I want to thank God for the word from the Lord today and let us bow our head with a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come now to thank you for your word. And, oh, God, we ask that you would right now, oh, God, go ahead and use what you created and then speak to what you made. Then, oh, God, help us to be receptive to what you say, obedient to what you will, and thankful for what you've done and doing in our lives. In Jesus' name, let us say amen. Amen. We're so thankful for the blessings of the presence of the Lord, for the goodness and the joy in the land. Uh, and, and so we just know that God is a marvelous and a good God. Um, listen at the, the scripture, number 17 and six. So Moses spoke to the children of Israel and each of their leaders gave him a rod, a piece from each leader, according to their father's house, 12 rods. And the rod of Aaron was among their rods and Moses placed the rods before the Lord in the tabernacle of witness. Um, and then uh, eight says, and it came to pass that on the day that Moses went into the tabernacle of witness and behold, the rod of Aaron of the house of Levi had sprouted and put forth buds, had produced blossoms and year ripe almonds. Then Moses brought out all the rods from before the Lord and all the children of Israel. And they looked and each man took his rod. Uh, I want to speak to you uh, from the subject, whose side are you on? And I want to sort of lift up that in, in this world, people have the tendency to vacillate uh, between fashions and between beliefs and between leaders and between movements. Uh, go from some people you find, uh, go from one movement to another one. Some you find uh, straddling the fence in between one. Uh, and, and, but, it's, but at some point you have to decide, you have to make a decision whose side are you on. And you have to stand for something. And there's no saying that if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Amen. You have to make a decision about where you stand and where you go forth and the principles that you stand on. And you have to decide to stand on those principles and not be moved. But I, I want to talk about whose side of you on. And in doing so, I want to talk about the time when Moses was having problems. As you know, when, when God uh, told the Israelites to go into the promised land, uh, they, uh, uh, they, uh, they got to the promised land and refused to listen to what God had to say. And as a result of that, they wind up going into the wilderness for 40 years. Well, there were, there were, there were 10 men who brought an evil report of the promised land and caused the people not to believe God. 
And, and, and those 10 men, God was angry with them for bringing that evil report. And that evil report caused the whole nation of Israel to not go into the promised land when God said so. And God brought a plague upon them and, and God killed them in the wilderness. Uh, the people were upset about it. They were afraid about it. And, and, and then people began after that began to mumble toward Moses. Mm. And then this dispute come up about who was going to be the priest. And, uh, and some of the people questioned Moses about who made you a prince and who put you in charge and why you the one, the only one act like you the only holy one. All of us are holy in the camp and uh, because it was an issue of who was going to lead. It's amazing. You pray to God, God send somebody to bring you up out of your despair, out of the bad situation. And soon as people get to a point, then they start complaining about who going to lead them. Uh, just like the Israelite themselves, when God brought them out of Egypt and all the things he did, they went and got them, made them a calf and say, this be the God that, that brought us up out of Egypt. It's quickly how quickly people can forget the goodness of the Lord. Uh, it's like that old saying, what have you done for me lately? Mm -hmm. uh, and and so, so we, we live in that kind of world that people quickly forget uh, the blessings and that of whom. And people start battling over who's going to do it. We see a nation right now caught in the grips of who's going to lead and who's going in the right way and, and whose way is the right way to follow. Uh, we got scientists uh, on both sides over one group talking, don't do this, another group saying, do that. And, and so it, it's just, it, it, it's, it's, it's such a, a chaotic time that we live in. Uh, but I just sort of lift up, we have to come to the point where we make some choices and, and choose. And there was one fellow named Korah that, that rose up with about 250 uh, of the leaders of Israel uh, to come against Moses and Aaron and say, you know, well, why, why you the only one got to be in charge? Why can't it just be just somebody else? And, and, and they, but what they forgot to do, is they angered God in the process. They thought they were just dealing with a man, but they forgot that God had sent the man. And, and so they angered God and God told them, said, get out from around the tent of Korah and all of his friends. And they tell everybody to leave, run. don't even get close to them, don't be around their tent because I'm finna deal with them. And God let the earth uh, open up and just swallow them and all their tents and all their people and everything that belonged to them just swallowed it up. Foo, my Lord. When, when the earth speaks for her, then you know God, you know, got on your nerve at that time. And so and then the people were still upset and coming against Moses and saying, now you done kill the people, you done tried to be the leader, you done kill God people. But the truth of the matter, God killed them because he was tired of the grumbling and complaining. And, and, and we live in a world where people grumble and complain. You do something good for them. Uh, I remember President Obama gave people uh, health care, 25 million people that had never had health care, uh, had health care, and folk been complaining about it ever since then. How are you going to complain about something that's going to help people? And, and, just, and still trying to find a way to get rid of it even now. When yeah, when it, it and don't have anything to replace it now. You ain't got no plan better. You've been talking noise now for eight years and talking about how you can do something better. And and you didn't have three and a half, almost four years as the president, and you still ain't come up with nothing better. But you got still talking about how bad it is and how terrible. But yet all the folk who that didn't have insurance who not got it are saying hallelujah, glory. Yeah. Put all kind of obstacles in the way they're trying to stop. That's the kind of world we live in. People would rather find a way to grumble and complain and tear folk down uh, rather than to thank God for the blessings that that folk have done. And and so, and that's how these leaders in Israel were at the, the same kind of uh, type of situation. Uh, uh, they they believe first of all the evil report. Uh, And believing the evil report, 
but yet and still they were yeah uh believing the evil report and yet and still uh they were, were were being blessed by what God was doing uh and and so so here they decided to come against uh the man of God but they forgot they were coming against God so Moses said, now let, let, we, we're going to let God decide who this thing we're going to be. And God going to show who's holy, who's righteous, and who ought to lead. He said, bring me every, from every tribe. Bring me a rod from every one of the tribes. Bring 12 of them. And we're going to put them in the presence of God. And they brought all these rods, and they put them in the presence of God in the tent of tabernacle, the, tent, the tabernacle of meeting. That's where God met them in the tabernacle of meeting. And they brought all these rods out there. And when they put all the rods in there, and one of the rods was the rod, what we call the rod of Aaron, which we know was the rod that Moses had. And, and the amazing thing I keep about this rod is this, that Moses did not get this rod out of God's hand. Moses picked this rod up somewhere along the way to be a shepherd. See, he got the rod thinking he needed it to be a shepherd. And he was using the rod that, that just the guide the sheep. What he didn't know is he, that God was teaching him how to use the rod to guide his people. And by the way, you know, we are a lot like sheep. Uh, we'll follow you for a minute, but as soon as we get distracted by self, we run off into some junk. <laughs> and, 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 and we run off, you got to go get them. And bring them back in, and then they run off again. By the time you get this with these set up, their crew over there that's running off, you got to go and get them out of the bushes. And there's some of them over there playing around the wolf den, and the wolf about to have some supper, and you got to go and fight the wolf and catch them off. And as soon as you get these back right, then, then they wonder why were you even bothering me? Because they think they got it all together and that kind of stuff. So that's how we are. We, 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 we just... Uh, we vacillate. We vacillate. We're on this side one day. We're on another the next day. You remember that crew that Jesus went down through Jerusalem that hollered, Hosanna in the highest. I mean, they had the highest praise. Hosanna in the highest. Our king cometh riding on a donkey. Hosanna, Jesus. Hallelujah, glory. But just a few days later, the same crowd the music changed. My, my love. Somebody put another, another, they put, you know, on those old, old, old songs, you used to have an A and a B side. And they always had the, 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 the hit record on the A side. The B side was something that folk, most folk didn't want to hear. No. And so, so what happened was on about a couple of days, on when he come through Jerusalem, they had it on the A side. It was a hit song and everybody was dancing to the music and it was going, it was, they had it going, the party was kicking. But a few days later, they flipped that thing on the B side and that thing changed. They said, crucify him, crucify him. My God. They don't want nothing to do with this Jesus. They done hell said, Hosanna. They done put branch, palm branches all down on the road. Some of them put their clothes on the road for him to just ride over it. Yeah. My, my Lord. But now they done vacillate to say, yeah. and, and so, so the question is, whose side are you on? Yeah. You know, there's some folk, they're all right in good time, but soon as things get a little tough, boy, they, 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 they start separating, they start vacillating, they start backing out, they start grumbling and complaining. I don't know why I followed you out here in the first place. You know, and some of them you ain't even tell to follow you. <laughs> my, my Lord. But now they want to put it all on you. Jesus oh, Christ. Mercy. Yeah. Mm. And, and look how you led us out here to do this. And you ain't did this. So 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 in this, this here world that we are in, uh, uh, we have to come to the point where we choose side mm. and so so Moses said bring the rods and so now and here was the thing I want you to understand all the rods had been cut off the tree so which mean all of them were dead they were just a piece of wood dead cut off and 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 so uh and I want to just sort of lift up we were much like those rods because when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden we got cut off we got cut off from the sword Dead. The Bible said that we were aliens to God, aliens to the common word, said we were without God and without Christ. It said we were without hope, that we were the people of far off, 
That we wasn't even near God, wasn't even close to him. The alien, that means we didn't even belong with him. You know, aliens don't even belong in it. That's the thing we're talking about in them UFOs. And one, are they real? They don't even belong on this world. That we didn't even belong in the presence of God. Can you imagine that you are alien to God? Not a child, not even a servant, but an alien. That's where we were. The Bible said we were afar off. But Jesus come to bring us back. My God. Somebody say, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Yeah. He come to bring us back. Come to your yeah. Reunite us back with the Father and then stuff. So, 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 so we were cut off. We were like those rods. We were dead, not able to produce. Because if you don't have life, you can't produce. Yeah. And, and so we were not able to produce anything. That rod, if you see that, and once you get it, it can't produce no tree. It can't, it don't have no leaves. It don't have no roots. Uh, so it can't produce. So it was cut off. But somehow when they put those rods, into the presence of God. Mm. Not all of them, but one of them, something began to happen. Now, all of them went into the presence of God. And God, I'm going to have to say something now. God don't do the same thing for everybody and all because God choose who he going to use. Ah, Lord. And he may not be the one you think he going to choose. Look at God from Zion. So all the rods went in the presence, but, it, but some only happened to one. All the other 11 came out just like they went in. My, my God. Oh, Jesus. And God said, no, not that, not that, not that, not that, but that right there. That, 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 that mold had been walking around with, that's the one. And, and that thing began to, it sprouted. Mm. Mm. Uh, which, was, which was spiritual regeneration. It began to regenerate in the presence of God. And, and, and so that's what we are designed to do, regenerate in the presence of God. Uh, if you get in the presence of God, some ought to happen to you. My, my Lord. And somebody ought to know you've been in the presence of the Lord. And, and so, so they began to, it began to sprout. And you know when something sprout, it, it, those little, the, 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 it began to, to spread up and come up and, 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 and so began to grow again. Mm. I, but I thought it was dead, but now it's been in the presence of the Lord. I thought it was cut off. But now it's been in the presence of the Lord. See, you might have been dead, but if you get into the presence of God, you can come alive again. Mm. You might have been cut off, but if you get into the presence of the Lord, he'll bring you back in. My, my God. Mm. And, and, and so now what was dead got new life. Mm. What was cut off is now uh, uh, is back in, in, into the source again. So he activated this new life, spiritual regeneration in the presence. And, and, and what happened is because God is beginning to remake the image of God in the children of God. And, and, and so he's also reestablishing divine order in our life. And that's what happened when we get in the presence of the Lord. And, and, and when you go to church, you get into the presence of God. When you pray, you get into the presence of God. When you read the scripture, you get into the presence of the Lord. When you meditate on the Lord... You get into the presence of God. When you walk in obedience to him, you get into the presence of God. And he began to regenerate things in your life. He began to, to remake you in his image. He began to remold you in his likeness. Your thoughts begin to change. Your, your words begin to change. Your, your actions take on a change. Because you begin to start acting like God. And, and you tell yourself, I've been cussing for God, but now I'm praying for folks. My, my Lord. I've been walking around with my Glock 9 ready to shoot somebody, but now I got my Bible in my bag and I'm ready to preach a word to the, of the Lord. My, my God. Yeah, I've been going around with my knife. I've been ready to cut somebody. But now I've I got a sword of the word and I'm ready to cut some sin out of somebody's life. My God. And so, so, so you have this here. Said I used to be a pray, I used to be a cusser, but now I'm a praiser. My God, glory to God. Woo, hallelujah. Glory mm. to God. Yeah, used to be on the stripper pole, but but now I got a holy dance. God, glory, glory to God. Woo, God will bring a change in your life. Woo, God Almighty. And so, so he began to, to, to remake you and reshape you. The Bible said that they that are in Christ is a new creation. Ah, uh, behold, old thing uh, have passed away and you become new. That's why I see in the, back in the country, they used to say it like this here. 
they, 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 they said, uh, I said, I looked at my hands and they looked new. I looked at my feet and they did too. Oh God, I had a new song. I had a new attitude. I had a new dance. You know how they used to say that thing? So I went to the valley, but it didn't go to state. But my soul got happy and I wind up staying all day. Ooh, I, I said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I just can't keep it to myself. I got the Jeremiah complex. The more I try to keep it quiet, the more it burns on the inside. And the more I find myself, I, I just got to tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. When you get regenerated, uh, uh, you become alive again. And you got to tell somebody that the Lord touched me. Woo. Glory. Touch me. Mm. And there's some folk in this country need a touch from the Lord. My God. God go by the White House, 1600, whatever that address, Pennsylvania <laughs> Avenue. Go by there and stay there a while. Don't, don't just go by and just, just, just hover over there and just, just let the Holy Ghost fall down in there, God. My, my, my Lord. Whoo, Jesus. My, my, my God. Boy, I can see Trump now that Holy Ghost hit him. Woo, woo. Knock that toupee off his head. Good God from Zion. Woo, glory to God. Glory to God. Mm. I'm going to move on. It sprouted. But, but but not only that, it also budded. See, the sprouting was just the beginning. And many times when we sprout, we stop and think we got it all. Come on, I'm alive again now. But you're alive, but have you grown? Mm. It also budded. It went to the new stage. The budding stage is the new development stage. That way you have evidence of new development. And what happens is, a spiritual formation is taking place. That, that God is, is changing you from the inside. You're taking on the nature of Christ. You're getting rid of your old nature. That old man is falling off. And the new nature of Christ is coming in. That, 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 that the liar is beginning to tell truth. The cheater is beginning to be faithful. My, 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 my God. The homemonger is beginning to stay where they belong. Mmm, my, my God. Ah, and, 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 and so, so you're beginning a spiritual transformation is taking place. Spiritual formation. That means your spirit is formulating up in the nature of Christ. You're taking on a nature of righteousness. You're taking on a nature of love. You're, you're, where you used to be sad, now you got joy. Where you used to be bitter, uh, now you got praise and glory to God. My, my God. Woo, glory to God. And, and so God is beginning to change where you used to be broken. Now you're beginning to say healing and wholeness. And, and, and so, so, so that nature of Christ is coming in. Uh, the nature of humility, uh, where you used to be too proud. Uh, a, a nature of obedience, where you used to be rebellious. A nature of sacrifice where you used to be a cheater and take everything you want. But but my God is now changing you. And you begin to yield yourself to the spiritual submission of the Holy Spirit. Ah, there's some folk that need to have an introduction with the Holy Spirit. Ah, glory to God. And some of them are in church. Need to have an introduction with the Holy Spirit. My, 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 not, not knowledge of the Holy Spirit, but to have an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. Yield to the submission. The Bible said, don't quench the Spirit. In other words, don't act like you want to act when the Spirit trying to get you not to act. Don't go where you want to go when the Spirit tell you to, to go. Don't bother with what you want to bother with when the Spirit say, leave it alone. Uh, yield unto the Spirit of an almighty God. When you throw your hands up and say, I don't know how to guide myself. I ain't smart enough to figure it out on my own. But my God, I heard, if I ask you, God, you'd answer my cry. They told me if I seek you, God, that you would, I would find you. They said, God, if I drew near to you, that you would come near to me. So, God, I'm coming to you. I need you, God. Every hour, guide me, oh, God, great Jehovah. Guide me through this pilgrim land. Guide me when I'm about to lose my mind. 
Guide me when I'm about to lose my way. Guide me when it done got on my last mind and my last nerve, God. Guide me when I'm confused and I don't know which way to turn. Guide me, God, when I'm vacillated trying to make it. Because mm. I heard that your word would be a, a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That God, you would show me where I am in my, in my presence. And then God, you would show me where I need to go in my future. My, my, my God. Guide me, Lord, along the way. Mm. And so it budded. But it didn't stop with budding. The Bible says it also bloomed. My, my, my God. Yeah, it, it, it done sprouted. It done budded. And now it's bloom. And you know what happened when the bloom come? You start seeing the manifestation of the change. The bloom is the reproductive cycle. When the plant get into the boom, bloom stage, then it's ready to be pollinated. Pollinated. And the bees go around. That's why you see the bees flying in over there from the butterfly from one plant to another one, pollinating them and, and, and it's in the productive cycle. God said, I need to make you productive because you remember you were dead and cut off and couldn't produce anything. Mm, you were like a potato chip in the bag. And you know, when you get the potato chip in the bag, it can't produce anymore. You can take a, just a potato and you can cut a piece of a potato off and throw it in there and put some dirt on it and hit a grow and hit a hit a hit a yield. My my Lord. But once you fry it and die it and put it in that bag, then that 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 chip can't produce no more. And that's what Satan trying to do to Christian, trying to fry us and die us and seal us up in a bag, got us all looking good. We looking good but can't produce nothing. Mm. Mm, you walked in the church with your three-piece suit on and your gator shoes on. Uh you got your yeah, you got your uh, uh, you got your what it is, a Michael Klein watch on, a Rolex, uh, you flashing, yeah, yeah, you got diamonds around your neck, yeah, and, and so you, 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 yeah, you, you just handling things, yeah, you walking in, you just stepped out of your new BMW, and you parked it up at the front so everybody could see it, you ain't parking in the parking lot with everybody else, you got up front parking, my, my God. And you walking in like you own the town. Hallelujah, glory. My, my Lord. But can you produce something? Mm. Can you produce something? <laughs> Woo, Jesus. And, 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 and so, 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 so it bloomed. It got into the productive cycle. Mm, my, my Lord. Uh, do, do you want to get to heaven? And, 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 and you got to face Jesus and he says, how many folk did you help get here? How many person you see in here that came on a word that you shared with them? And wouldn't it be a sad thing to say nobody? Mm. Oh God, nobody, uh, nobody, Lord have mercy. And, and, and so in the, in the productive cycle, you learn to walk in the spirit. Mm, that means you start what's on the inside begin to come on the outside. And, and it began to beautify. Because you know when the flowers come, it, it beautified the world. But, and also it created an aroma, the smell of them. And, and you ever smell the, the honeysuckles when they're in full bloom? Oh, good God from Zion. The honeysuckles, they, they, they got this sweet fragrance to it. And, and, and some of you may not know about a honeysuckle, but those who've been in the countryside know if you take a honeysuckle and you break it off and you take it and pull it just right toward the back, ah, you can get some of that sweet nectar that's in there. And oh, it tastes sweet as honey. Mmm, my, my Lord. Just off the bush, you ain't got to go down to the candy store. But if you want a little sweetness, just go to the honeysuckle bush. And, and you had to pull it out there just right. It's got this long stem, and it's got a bulb on the end that when you pull it, that will pull the honey 
uh, the nectar right toward the end. And you see that drop of nectar that come out. And it's just so good. My, my, my God. And God just showing you the sweetness uh, is on the inside. Now, I, I've got something so sweet for you. You ain't even got to go to the candy store. Hallelujah, glory. The, the, the candy man can't make it like this. Mm, my, my, my God. Woo. And, and, and so not only, he said, does it smell sweet, but it also tastes good too. And it looks good while I'm at it. God said, can nobody do it like I do it? He said, I can paint on just this. He said, go by an open field that nobody bothered with sometime. And you see how I would paint them and, and have all the different flowers out there on the different colors. And he said, I have them all growing and, and look like somebody has been weaving, an art has been weaving in the tapestry around. And he said, it is. He said, I'm the artist. Mm, my, my, my Lord. Glory to God. In the productive bloom. You ought to bloom sometime. Yeah, you, 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 you might have been shut up most of your life because you've been hurt. But every now and then you ought to be able to bloom sometime. Uh, and, when, and, and when you find Jesus, you ought to be able to open up. You know, when that bloom, it opens up. And what was on the inside, now you can see it on the outside. It beautified the world. It changed the role of the world. And it brings sweetness in the world. God said you ought to have some sweetness sometime. I, I know you could have been hurt because of that marriage that went wrong. But, but, but you've been in my presence and you ought to have some sweetness by now. I, I, I know you got some church hurt and some folk done done your wrong. But, but after a while, you ought to get your shout back on again and say, I can glorify God. Because my God took away my hurt. He took away my pain. When folk brought me hurt, God brought me gain. When folk did me wrong, God did me right. When somebody put me down, my God picked me up. When folk locked the door on me, my God opened it up. When folk said I wasn't going to make it, God said, come on in. Ooh. Yeah, they bloom. And, and then when you balloon, what you begin to do oh, is you, 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 you begin to become a witness. And your witness expression of the nature of Christ come out in the world. You, you, your witness how folks see you. They see you going to church and they remember what you used to be. They said, oh, Mark, going to church? Oh, something happened. I see Mark and then you hear it on there, they call the buddy. Hey, I you guess who I saw in church? What? I saw Mark in church. No, not Mark. Yeah, I saw Mark in church. And guess where he was? What 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 was he? Was it in the back of the church? No, he was in the pulpit. I saw Mark preaching in the pulpit. You mean not Mark? Mark, the same Mark that you Mark, the same one that we used. Mark was preaching in the pulpit. My God. And so you become a witness just with your presence and with your actions. And what you begin to do is learn to be a faith sharer, sharing and releasing divine order back in the world. The world that went wrong and you helped to make it wrong. Yeah, by the way, you need to know that. Every one of our sins, we help to take divine order out of the world. <laughs> and so we owe the kingdom of God because mm, mm, we done help to take it out and we owe the kingdom of God. Don't you come up here acting like you did somebody ought to be thankful just because you walked in the house. That would be glad because I walked up in here. Uh, 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 you better be thankful he let you walk up in there because mm, you done tore the kingdom down out there with your foolishness too. <laughs> Mark, was the, the thing is, Mark wasn't the only one out there. Because if he'd have been the only one, he'd have been out there all by himself. And he wouldn't have had nobody to do all that stuff with. But Mark had a whole lot of company out there. Mm. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yes. And, and, and so, so, so then, because sometimes he'd make you go back and minister to the folk you hung out with. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. You got to go back and preach to the folk that you done cut up with. Yeah. Uh -huh. Wow. And then sometime when you're the preacher, you got to go bury them. Mm hmm Yeah. You got to bury your partner who you done ran cut up with. Mm hmm Yeah. You got to go and, 
and eulogize your ex-girlfriend. Oh, Lord Jesus. Yeah, and the folks tripping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you got to be the servant of the Lord. You got, you, you're in your bloom stage. Oh. And this is where people see what is called the beauty of holiness. Mm. The beauty of holiness when we live it to the point where somebody uh, feel good about it. Now you go to a restaurant and the food's so good, you're eating it so good it makes somebody hungry watching you eat it. Mmm, my, my Lord. They, they wouldn't even think about eating until you start eating. But you're eating so good that it made, made them hungry. They had to have some just because you're eating it. God said that's how. You ought to be about holiness. You ought to live it in such a way that somebody get hungry for it just watching you do it. Mm. You do it with an excitement. You do it with a thrill. You do it with a joy. You do it with a passion. My, my, my Lord. You, you, you ought to just do it. My, my God. Mm. Yeah, you got to do it like them fellas be shooting them three-pointers. They hit them three-pointers. And you see them just some of them when they when they some of them some some of them got to the point when they shoot it, they start walking off while it's still in the air. And that, that, that's it. Now throw their hands up and they're walking off while it's in the air. You 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 got to get like that sometime. Mm. Now, you done spoke the word, but before you even see it out, you got your hand up already in the praise of God. Because you just expecting and waiting on it to just drop. Boom! My, my, my Lord. Jesus. Woo! And so, and then finally it says, it yield ripe, ripe, now you notice this, and not green, ripe almonds. My, my Lord, this, this rod, this stick that's been cut off, this stick that's been <laughs> dead, now it's got ripe almonds on it. Now, first of all, that's spiritual identity because it tells where it come from. See, before then, nobody knew what kind of rod it was. All they knew it was a rod. But now we know it was an almond rod. And it came from an almond tree because it's bearing ripe almonds. Now here to watch the thing here. It still ain't been put back on the tree. Mm, but it's producing fruit because it's been in the presence of God. <laughs> oh, Jesus, Lord, have mercy. God said, hey, hey. God said, I give you, I regenerate you and give you a new life. Mmm. You think you had a life before, but I'm going to give you a new life in Christ Jesus. Mm, my, my God. I'm, I'm going to make you all over again and make you new. Now, this spiritual identity, he said, now you're going to identify with me. You identify with the devil. You identify with the liar. You identify with the whole mongers. You identify with the fighters. You identify with the cussers. You identify with all that. But now you're going to identify with me. Oh, God. My, my God. Oh, Jesus. See, now the gospel about you going to change now. Now, now they're going to start talking about how you pray all the time. My God. One of the biggest compliments that I got was when I went back to my hometown and I became a school teacher and I started working in the school system. And, and, and this guy came to me and he said, Ma, they, they think you something wrong with you, boy. I said, well, what you mean? Why they say that? They said, because when you come to work, say you go into the break area every morning and you read your Bible and you pray. And then you come out and go to your classroom and go to work. I said, well, what's wrong with that? Well, he said, when, well, to think about it, it ain't nearly ain't nothing. I said, yeah, uh, because they ain't hanging around in the brick area trying to hit on somebody else woman. Because they ain't around there gossiping about everybody. Because they ain't around there talking foolishness so they think I'm crazy. So I just threw my hand up and went to go, hallelujah. I said, I know I'm, 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 I'm trying to reprove their case right now because I'm acting a little on the crazy side. But I said, but here's what they don't know. They don't know where I come from. And the fact that somebody think I'm going too far for God is a reason why I need to get my praise on right now. I was like, John, you need to hold my mule right now because I need to go and get my praise on. Because I've been praying, trying to get right. I've been trying to overcome some stuff. I've been trying to leave some stuff behind. I've been trying to go to a new level. And now somebody think I've gone too far. My God sure have made a difference in me. God have changed my life. And I thank him. Mm, spiritual identity, you begin to identify. Mm, but here's what you got to get used to. When you start changing your identity, 
uh, you're going to lose some friends. They ain't going to call you like they used to call you. You're not going to get invited to some of the things you got invited to. Mm. Because now you got a new identity. My, my Lord. Yeah. And, 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 and so, so they begin to identify you in, in, a, in a new way. But I want you to know this. For every one of them parties that you don't get invited to anymore, God said, I got a new party for you. He said, I got a Holy Ghost party. And, and you know what they say about the Holy Ghost party? It don't stop. Ah, God. And what I love about the Holy Ghost party, I ain't got to go to see the drug man if I want to get a little high. Ah, and if I want to get a little high now, I ain't got to go find out the reefer man and, 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 and find out whether he got some gun in or not. Ah, glory to God. I don't need to get no shotgun to do it. All I got to do is throw my hands up and call the name Jesus. Ah, if I say Jesus, ah, somebody have on the inside. Just call Jesus. You ought to try it every now and then. Just say Jesus. Even if you don't know what to pray for, just call the name. It's someone by the name. Somebody said there's something about the name. Of the name Jesus. Woo. Spiritual identity. Woo. And that's why you feel it. Because you identify with his spirit. That's why you get excited when you hear about it. Because you identify with his presence. That's why you get excited when he comes in the room. Uh, folk may not know he came in, uh, but you know he came oh, in. Because my father Jesus. just come in the room. Uh, uh, the power of my God uh, uh, just come in the room. Uh, that's why the preacher say, uh, I feel my help coming. Oh, God. I feel the power of my God uh, uh, moving in my heart. I feel the power of my God. Are changing things. I feel the power of my God about to turn it all around. I want to tell you, folk, America's in a bad place, but the power of our God is about to move, about to fall on this nation. Oh, my God, shall I have my way? Oh, my God, shall I'm bringing down our strong towers? Oh, my God, shall I'm tearing down our crooked places? Oh, my God. So, spiritual identity to where we identify with God. And so, everybody knew who God had chose <laughs> and who was with God. Jesus. Listen to this. First chapter of John's gospel in the first verse John says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God <laughs> and the word was God but the part that I want you to focus on if the word got to be with God we sure better get with him mm -hmm. we, yeah, we got to stop vacillating from side to side. Mm. And we have to decide to be on God's side. And I'm tell you why. It's the only side that's going to win. And when all of us stuff is going down, it's the only one that's going to last. The Bible said don't love the world because the love world is perishing away. It's passing away. It's going down. Ah, my, my Lord. Yes, but those who Love the Lord shall abide eternally. Yeah. We're going through some tough things. And we're about to see some mess just get all stirred up. But in the middle of the mess, look for God to move. And God to bring some stuff right. Because this is a time. This is a season of more divine justice. And God will bring some stuff and put it in order. Uh, God bless you. And remember. You are the sprout, you are the bud, you are the bloom, and you show a lot to yield some fruit. My, my Lord. Yes, be productive.
and make some disciples in Christ. God bless you now. I hope we said a word that makes a difference in your life. And know that God is on your side if you are on his side. Glory to God. Y'all be blessed. And there may be somebody that need to accept Christ as their Savior. If you are, just go ahead and just tell God I'm a sinner in need of your grace. And Jesus, I believe that you died for my sin and washed them away. I want to be your child and live with you forever. And if you said that, you are a child of God. Walk in that. Get up out of whatever you in. Walk in it. And know this. If you're walling in a sin, it's only because you choose to. Because God has already set you free. Get up from that. And go on blue. And yield fruit into the kingdom. God bless you. And God keeps you in his care. Awesome message, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Uh, Praise yes. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. I want to uh, do two things now. I want to remind you. Uh, on October the 3rd at 11 o'clock, we would have the Jubilee 2020 uh, June, uh, Zoom brunch. That's Amen. October the 3rd at 11 o'clock, the Zoom brunch. Amen. 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 Huh? Okay. And if you check your email, there's more information on the email for you. Also, Sister Maxine has an announcement to make. Church. Hello. 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 Good, morning. Hey, Good, morning. Good morning. I just would like to say another blessing. Uh, I'm sure some of you know those that do not. I have a client that every year for the last seven or more years yes. have given us a, a, a donation, a blessing. Yes. And uh, mm -hmm. it's been anywhere from four, five, six thousand dollars. Right. And I thank God, but mm -hmm. I just was a little, this year I didn't know because I know that he has been going through him and his wife with their family, but in the mail, in the mail, $4,000, my Lord, that's a blessing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's give God a praise. Amen. Amen. to the power of our God. Those of you that's on Facebook Live, thank you for connecting up with us. And we just send the blessing of the Lord with you. May his rich blessing abide with you and if he ever keeps you in his care. God bless you now. Amen. 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 Amen.